Hey everyone, I'm Monkey of Chaos. This video is just going to be a quick run through of 10 different demos from the Steam demo event. So, 10 games, so let's get started. Chernobyl Liquidators is an interesting one. The demo has you playing a fireman first responder to the Chernobyl incident. The full game will have you playing other roles as well. So, during the game, you're running around, putting out fires, trying to avoid radioactive glowy bits, and just wandering around. No mutants, no shooting. You go around doing some light platforming, spraying water on fires, bursting open doors, and progressing through the level. At its surface, it sounds kind of boring, but I actually had a lot of fun with this demo. I'm looking forward to the full release. I may be a little biased, because I find the events of the Chernobyl incident pretty interesting, but I enjoy the game a lot. Uh, realistic is stretching things a bit for sure, but I think they really just mean realistic as in, this isn't like every other Chernobyl game on Steam, there are no mutants here. Uh, no pricing or release date that I can find as of this recording. Bandit Simulator is a first person, well, bandit simulator. No announced release date or pricing yet. In the demo, you fight your way out of jail and make a run for it. There are NPCs that will give you quests and progress the story. As your bandit, a lot of quests have you stealing things, either from houses where you can take everything that isn't nailed down and then resell it for some cash later, or by going around picking pockets off unsuspecting marks. There's some basic lock picking, of course, and there's other mini games such as Dice Game where you roll a set of dice and use them to negate your opponent's dice while trying to score your own sets, and the opponent's trying to do the same thing to you. Uh, and a drinking game where you have to keep grabbing drinks off a table as the screen sways more and more with each drink. The graphics are obviously a little dated, but there's a good groundwork here, and for the right price, this could be a fun little game. Deepest Chamber is a roguelike deck builder hitting early access July 22nd, though no pricing has yet been announced. You're given a map with some choices of different rooms, each room containing different enemies and different possible rewards or enemy modifiers. Clearing three rooms gets you down to the next level of the dungeon, get new cards for your deck, artifacts that buff you in different ways, so on and so on. Overall, pretty typical roguelike deck builder. The only thing that really makes it stand apart is the art style, but the roguelike deck builder niche is pretty bloated at this point, and this one doesn't really do anything special to make it stand apart. That's my opinion anyway. I play a fair amount of deck builders, and I don't think I'm going to be bothering with this one. Industria is a story-driven FPS that seems to be heavily influenced by Half-Life. Planned for a Q3 2021 release with no price announced yet, but from what I've seen and the devs stating they expect about 4 hours of gameplay, I would expect it to come in at $10 or less. I ran into a few weird graphical glitches in the demo, it seemed to really not like me switching weapons a few times. The gunplay feels pretty basic, it more or less seems like the kind of FPS that's more interested in telling a story than in the gameplay, so it'll really come down to how the story pans out and what the price point is. Lens Island is a third-person survival game. The demo takes place on a tiny island. The full game will obviously have a much larger map. Uh, basic gathering and base building fair, chop down some trees, build a house, etc. There's also some farming where you can build garden beds to grow crops, and a dungeon delving aspect, though at least in the demo the mobs were pretty repetitive, and once you get down their attack patterns, combat's fairly easy. It has some potential depending on how much more content gets added beyond what we saw. It all seems pretty basic, but it's pretty laid back, chill, survival, base building, farming kind of deal if that's your thing. Song of Iron is a 2.5D action-adventure side-scroller. Fairly straightforward combat and controls, beautiful imagery. The demo played really well and left me wanting more. The solo dev on this is looking for the full game to take about 2-3 to three hours for a playthrough, so this one's really going to come down to, okay, how much are they going to charge for a 2-3 to three hour game. At the right price though, I'm super excited to play this game. It, it looks gorgeous and I can see having a lot of fun with this for that 2-3 to three hours. Rogue Lords is probably the most disappointing demo out of the bunch for me. It's a roguelike, we'll say, character builder. Uh, you're the devil, you select from a cast of evil characters such as Dracula, Bloody Mary, the Headless Horseman, etc. Uh, you roam around an overworld map that, honestly, it's useless. They could have easily replaced it with just a clickable map. The overworld map really doesn't add anything. And you go from turn-based battle to turn-based battle with some events and other nodes mixed in. Um, for events, you're going to make a choice and have a percent chance to get some reward. Battles are turn-based and you select from a few skills, which you select new and upgraded skills as you progress. So rather than like adding cards to a deck for a deck builder, you're just you're just upgrading and adding skills to your characters. There's also devil power you can use to increase the chances for events. So say you have a 50% chance at some event, you could upgrade that to 100% for the cost of devil power, which also doubles as your HP, and if you lose it all, you lose the run. And you can also use devil power in the middle of combat to say, take a debuff off of one of your characters and put it on an enemy, or reduce an enemy's HP to zero, different things like that. I can't really place my finger on it, but the game just wasn't doing it for me. It felt really repetitive and I got just bored playing it, which is weird because this type of game is usually my jam, and the idea of it is really cool. I like the cast of characters, but 
it for some reason just wasn't doing it for me. So for this one, I wouldn't say it's bad per se, I just think personally I'm not feeling it, but maybe I'll give it another chance later down the road. Spurtle was probably my least favorite game of the bunch. They literally took the game of memory, uh, where you have face down cards and you need to pick two and try to get them to match, so you're just remembering where different things are and matching them. Um, except instead of cards, you've got land tiles, and they added some characters and powers so you can kill each other to be the last one standing. So it's competitive memory, which is not something anyone is asking for. <laughs> Terra Nil is described as a reverse city builder. Basically, you start off with a wasteland, you have to build different things to repair the ecosystem, with the end goal being to fix the ecosystem, pull everything you built up, and leave behind some beautiful scenery so you can move on to the next ecosystem. It has a little bit of a puzzly feel to it as you're combining the different buildings to get the points you need to repair everything. Overall, a cute, really laid back game. It definitely seems lower stress than some city builders, which, you know, tend to spiral out of control at a certain point, at least from what we've seen in the demo. Usurper is an isometric action RPG roguelite. Basically, you run around as a ghost, kill an enemy, take their body to get some new abilities and weapons, and you run around as that new body. What I played of the demo seemed fairly solid, the combat was pretty tough, and I did end up dying quite a bit, but it didn't feel unfair, it just felt like I was bad. I'll we'll have to wait and see on full release what the enemy variety looks like, and the demo was initially just different versions of skeletons, different weapons, maybe different sizes, but, but not that much variety. I'm also interested to see how they implement co-op, they're saying there's going to be local co-op, so it, it seems like the type of game that could be a lot of fun if you added co-op in there. Alright, and that's all 10 games. If you like this, I'll probably be doing some reviews of some of these as they come out, uh, we'll see what happens. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, jump down in the comments, let me know which of these games you're looking forward to, if there's any other games coming out soon you're looking forward to, if you played any of these, what you thought of them. Especially Rogue Lords, like that one, it just seems like a game I should like, but I really didn't like it, I don't, I don't know. And Chernobyl Liquidators is a weird, like, I don't understand why I like that game, but I do. So that's it for now, I am Monkey Chaos, and I'll catch you next time, later.